At this point, you don't even need to be a fan of football to notice the Argentina men's national team. La Aba Celeste have won all four of the past four in national competitions and taken part in and have produced some of the game's biggest ever names. Argentina's rich contemporary football history has a rather peculiar origin story, one that dates back before the days of Messi, before the days of Maradona. It even dates back to before the 20th of June 1902, when Argentina played Uruguay in the nation's first ever international football match. And all of this, as well as Argentine football as we know it, is because of Scotland. Yes, if it weren't for the land of John McGinn, Lemmy, and Iron Brew, Lionel Messi could very well be a binman right now. Our story starts with a Scotsman by the name of Alexander Watson Hutton. He was born in Glasgow in 1853 and graduated from the University of Edinburgh. In 1882, at the age of 29, he decided to move to Argentina. It was here where he took up teaching at St. Andrew's Scots School, a bilingual school in Argentina. After working there for two years, he decided to found a school of his own. The Buenos Aires English High School was founded in 1884, and it was there where he incorporated football into lessons on a regular basis. I know I've been throwing loads of dates around, so let's put this all into context. The first ever international football game was played in 1872, 10 years before Hutton set foot in Argentina. The match was between England and Scotland, and took place in Hutton's home city of Glasgow. The match ended in a nil-nil draw, but my guess is that Scotland were the better team. England would go on to establish their football association and national team the very same year, and Scotland would follow suit a year later. By the time Hutton arrived in Argentina, football was growing in popularity. However, it hadn't quite arrived in South America yet. Denmark's national team was founded in 1889 and was the first ever non-British national team. The ones that followed were limited to Europe or the British sphere of influence. When Hutton ordered a set of footballs for the multilingual school, this was believed to have been the first time that footballs were ever on the South American continent. When Alec Lamont, the head teacher of Hutton's first school, founded the Argentine Association of Football League in 1891, it was the first time that a professional football league had been established outside of the British Isles. The Argentine Football Association was later formed in 1893 and is the oldest FA on the South American continent. What happened next started to shape the international footballing structure as we know it. More teams started to form throughout Argentina and it wasn't long until the rest of the continent started to catch on. Chile had their own national team two years later in 1895 and Uruguay with the next to fall suit in 1901. This had a snowball effect on the continent and by 1925 when Venezuela formed the national team all 10 current members of Conmebol were established. Conmebol itself was formed in 1916, with Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and Uruguay being the four founding members. It's clear that football was taking off in South America. But how is Argentina getting on within the continental football scene? Argentina hosted the first ever Copa America in 1916, back when it was called the South American Football Championship. This consisted of a round-robin format between the four Conmebol members at the time. Argentina finished runners-up to Uruguay, who go on to dominate both continental and global football at the time. Argentina claimed the first ever Copa America title on home soil in 1921, after finishing above Brazil in another round-robin tournament. This was the fifth edition of the Copa America, and the last one of four teams, as Paraguay participated in the 1922 edition of the competition. By the time 1930 rolled around, football was so much of a global phenomenon that continental competitions weren't exactly cutting it. The 1930 World Cup was the first edition of football's most iconic competition, and it was hosted in Uruguay. Although the tournament wasn't hosted in Argentina, this was another sign of the rapid growth of football in South America, as well as Hutton's influence. There were seven national teams established around the world before Argentina were the first to do it in South America in 1893, and football had already been institutionalized in Britain for two decades. Despite this, when the idea came about for a global international football tournament, the first of its kind, it was hosted on the South American continent, in a country which formed its football association nine years after Argentina's. Football may have had its head start in Europe, but the popularity that was a result of Hutton's influence led to South America being an example of the finest the game has to offer. This was proven even further when Uruguay went on to win their home tournament, being none other than Argentina in the final, 4 goals to 1. Yugoslavia were the only European team to finish the tournament in a top 4 spot, after being defeated in third place playoff by the United States. I have no idea how that happened. Maybe that's a video for another day, because that, that needs investigating. Hutton passed away in 1936 at the age of 82, which was quite impressive given the lifespan at the time was 56 on average. In his lifetime, he saw international football start in his native Scotland at the age of 20 before introducing it to the South American continent. In his lifetime, he saw 13 Copa Americas, four of which were hosted in Argentina, and four of which were won by Argentina. And although Argentina didn't host or win a World Cup until 1978, 
You can even credit the two World Cups he saw in his lifetime to him. Part of the demand of the World Cup was to create an international football competition that sees nations from all over the world take part. South America had the most participants out of any other confederation with seven, one of the participants being the eventual hosts and champions in Uruguay. Although Hutton saw a variety of global football milestones in his lifetime, it's a legacy he created with football in Argentina that would be impossible to go without mentioning. As mentioned, Argentina won their first World Cup in 1978 on home soil. They went ahead and grabbed a second title in 1986, thanks to a goal against England from a certain Diego Maradona that led him to be dubbed as the greatest Scottish football legend by many Scotland supporters. Scoring against England in a World Cup for Argentina, we're sure Hutton was smiling down at it, sharing the joy with his countrymen. Argentina wouldn't win another World Cup until 2022, however their results in the Copa America speak for themselves. With their recent extra time win over Colombia in the final, Argentina are officially the most successful team in the history of the competition, with an astonishing 16 titles. They've become the first team since that Spain team not too long ago to win three major tournaments in a row, and is another certain number 10 who has been honoring Halton's legacy over the past decade by establishing himself as the greatest player to ever kick a football. I- I'm not going to lie, I was more thinking about Messi, but I, I guess John McGinn is-, is a very close second. It's clear to see how much of Argentina's culture is influenced by football these days, and the ripple effect this has on global football and culture as a whole. And to think it all started because a school teacher swapped the Glaswegian wind for Buenos Aires sunshine 142 years ago, it's quite something in itself. So on behalf of the Tartan army, de nada, Argentina. Maybe you can repay us by letting us borrow Alexis McAllister next time we have a must-win game in a major tournament. We'll just pass him off as Gary's son or something. Given the fact I've managed to mention Gary McAllister in this video, I think it's a good time to sign off. Please be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know what you want to see next.